Welcome to Ray Presents. Today I have the privilege to sit down with Marilyn Cook, filmmaker, writer, director, who I had the privilege to work with. <laughs> I had the privilege to work with you, uh, to meet you at the uh, Fantasia Film Festival uh, just over a month ago already, and uh, it was great. How are you doing? I'm doing really well today. Thank you so much for asking. How are you? Not bad at all. Still okay. summertime, so we're yeah. so happy. We're not allowed to say the F word, okay? Fall. <laughs> we don't say the F word. We won't say it. We won't say it. Listen, Marilyn, um, just wanted to know, you know, I have a few questions for you. I, I, I love the work you're doing. Uh, Montreal-based filmmaker, writer, director. You know, uh, No Ghost in the Morgue is your latest project. Mm -hmm. And it's garnered a lot of recognition, including uh, winning the Best Narrative Short Film Award and uh, being an Academy Award qualifier. So congratulations for that. Um, could you share the inspiration behind the story and the challenges you faced in uh, bringing it to life? Uh, sure. Well, I mean, the inspiration is, it's its a pretty long story, so I can maybe tell the short story. Because <laughs> basically, um, it was during the pandemic and somebody that I know that was very close to me passed away. Mm -hmm. And there was a moment when, you know, there was a few, there were a few days that passed between, um, between that person's death and when the, the funeral. So, and I spoke to the person who was working, you know, working with the bodies and she was just such a surprising and inspiring person for me because she really spoke about the, like to them, they were people. They were really people, even though they were, they were like deceased. And she really spoke about them as if they were still alive and she would speak to them. And I don't know, there was something there that really, really, touched me profoundly and that really moved me and that just made me feel very comforted too knowing that my loved one was being taken care of by her and so I think that was a, a first like a first kind of entryway into this story where I was like oh what is it like how do how does somebody like this kind of start doing some doing that kind of work you know and I started getting really interested in that and researching that and that was uh, that was quite a rabbit hole to fall down i would say but um and also at the same time like i had just left my my day job because i wanted to you know try and make it as a writer director and just like a few weeks after a few months after i think 2 3 months after the pandemic struck and everything stopped and i was really questioning what I was doing with my life and, and like having a lot of self-doubt and wondering like I think you know the questions that the, the 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 main character in the film is trying to figure out that's kind of where I was at the moment too so okay. to me it was like okay I'm gonna put this in a fictional story and mix in this idea of somebody working at the morgue and taking learning how to take care of dead bodies and having this whole reflection around death and what it means and the cycle of like, you know, taking care of people while they're alive or, or, you know, taking care of them while they're deceased. It's like a continuum. And yeah, and also I have a really strong connection to, to both my grandmothers, even though like one of them I didn't know her at all. And so I think this film was also a way for me to kind of make her exist in this world that I invented for her, you know? So, so it's like, there's these, there are these very vivid sequences in the film that are in 16 millimeter film that are very like the lighting is very different. It's very textured. And so to me, it was like, Oh, this is to me, this is my imaginary place where kind of grandmothers live, you know? <laughs> so yeah, to me, it was like putting all of these different things. I wanted to just put them together and, you know, talk about death also, but in a very, luminous way like not in a you know even though it happens in a morgue or whatever it's not like a gory creepy film it's i wanted it to be very light and very luminous and to to, to have some humor in it also so no, yeah. I, I loved it like i told you before i really really enjoyed it and uh, thank you, you know, can i do a shameless auto plug <laughs> <laughs> it's on uh, TV5 TV, uh, TV, TV UniTV right now on um, online so people can go watch it in French go watch it <laughs> highly recommended go watch it I enjoy myself it's a topic that's not often I don't know if it's not often spoken about in uh, the black community but I thought it was you know it's refreshing 
uh, to, 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 to talk about these topics. And speaking about, about your films, I know you, you, you emphasize uh, the importance of dreams and honoring ancestors. How do you mm -hmm. translate these themes into your, your visual s storytelling to create an immersive experience for the audience? Well, to me, they're very, um, I would say they're almost obsessions. I don't know why it's like, I keep, I keep writing or, you know, creating worlds where these two ideas, you know, the, the ideas of dreams and of ancestors. Um, yeah, to me, I don't know. It's to me, it's the way that I feel. I kind of, I kind of, it's the way that I, I, I see things and then I, and that I feel them, I guess. And so I think in the way that I do films, I, how do I say this? I like, I like it to be very, I like the visuals to tell the story too. Like, I don't, I don't like it when it's too, in my stories, I don't usually like it when it's too dialogue heavy or when you, it feels very like too, too explained, you know? So I do leave kind of some of it to the, the audience to kind of figure out what is this exactly that I'm seeing? It kind of feels like a dream. Um, but also I think film, like the actual, you know, 16 millimeter film, 35 millimeter film, there is something very dreamlike to me about those formats that I feel in digital is more like the real world. It's more like what we're used to seeing. And there's there's just such a dreamlike quality to me to, to film. So to me, that's one way of portraying it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and I think it's... I don't know. I feel like to me, it's like the, we we separate these things in our minds of like there's death and there's life and there's like, you know, there's us and there's the past. And to me, it's like, oh, I'm not sure everything is so clear cut. You know, I don't know. I don't have any like particular beliefs. I'm trying to push on people. <laughs> but but it's like, yeah, I feel like to me, it's like a continuum of things, you know, and that even if you're just daydreaming and you're thinking about somebody, you're thinking about a memory or you're thinking about the past or or if you're sleeping and dreaming, it's like, you know, these things kind of still exist in some way, I feel, you know, even if it's for a moment just in your head. So, and I feel like these memories or these dreams or whatever they are, they can, they do feel real in that moment. So mm -hmm. to me, it's like, I, I don't see it as, as that much of a separation between like dream world and real world. Or real like, world. Yeah. Or fantasy world even and real world. Or... So, so tell me, Marilyn, so from short film, to web series. So you, you've worked across various formats. Yeah. How do you approach storytelling? Um, uh, how does it differ in these formats? Um, I think the main difference is that to me, short films are really like almost pure freedom. It's really like where you get to explore different things and be bold and, and, it's where you can really try things and there there is that freedom there i find that's that's really like like for no ghost in the morgue i was like i remember writing that that film and i was like oh my god <laughs> so is this gonna work like on paper i'm I, it kind of works but i'm not so sure and then we shot it during the pandemic so yeah coming back to your first question about the challenges like that was a huge challenge, like shooting Japan. during a pandemic. And it was before there were the vaccines and we had like, oh my, it was so, ho hopefully never again. Hopefully. hopefully. Never Cross our fingers. Like, like not just for shooting, but for the world, the world mm -hmm. in general, obviously. But, but yeah, so um, like to me, short films is really like a playground and web series I find is much more, well, see, you have constraints because of the formats and you have a lot, you have other people involved that it's not just you as a creator anymore. It's like you have, you know, you have writers and then you have the director who comes in and then you have like all the producers and then you have the, the diffuser, uh, uh, broadcasters, broadcasters. Mm -hmm. the, like the people who are actually going to stream the streamers who are going to stream the series. So you have a lot of people who are coming together to make this thing. And often you come in and it's like the project's already started. So people already have an idea of what things should be. So it's like, okay, it, it becomes more of like a, okay, how do I fit into this? And how does my vision kind of bring what they have to take it further? And it's like a collaborative type of. <laughs> it is, it is very different. I find it's very different, but there, to me, it's like, there's not, it's, it's there, there's not one that's better or worse than the other. I think it's just very different. 
I think if I was to be a hundred, you know, hundred percent creating my own, uh, I feel like to me, writing is, is, is a very lengthy process. So I don't think I would be able to like, I don't think I would be able to, to work as much or to, to shoot as much if it was just my things. Um, so, and I find it's, it's also, you know, I only work on projects that so far anyway, <laughs> touching wood, but you know, so far I only work on projects that, that really strike a chord with me or that resonate with me in some way. So it's like, it's like, okay, I have this, like, I read it and I see something in my head and I'm like, okay, how do I make this happen? Or, you know, should it be more like this or like this? And then it's also fun to have a team that you can bounce ideas with and that are very involved in, in, in engaged in, in the project. So yeah, I would say those are the main differences, I think. Tell me about, tell me about your writing process. She said it's a lengthy, it's a lengthy process. How does it work? <laughs> you know, those of us who are not in the business, how does it work? And yeah, how I think long it, are we talking about? Um, like right now I'm writing my, I'm writing my first feature and it's, I think it's, 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 it's just a different mind space that I have to be in, I find, than with directing. So I think directing is, it, it, it's, I don't know, it's more like um, hands-on, like it's more concrete, but I find writing is like taking a block of mud and trying to make a sculpture out of it. It's mm -hmm. like, okay, where's the sculpture in this block of mud? You know, it's like, there's either ideas that go all over the place and there are ideas for characters or for scenes or for settings or for music, or it's like, cause I'm also a director. Sometimes I have just ideas of things that are like too advanced in the process. It's like, okay, no, no, I have to come back to the actual writing and the structure and everything. So like the way that I do it, I usually start out with like, yeah, just tons of ideas that go all over the place. And then the difficult part for me, which is a lengthy part for me, is to struct structure all that into like an actual story that makes sense and, you know, that has a beginning, a middle and end. And um, yeah, and that has like, you know, character development and all that stuff. So um, yeah, and I think it's why, you know, in my short film so far and, and in my feature as well, it's like there are a lot of different ideas or different themes that kind of exist in in one thing and that that's to me, that's what I really like to do but I think it also makes it harder <laughs> because then it's not just like one idea or like you know one thing in the short film or in a feature film it's like 12 ideas like in my short film is maybe three different ideas like I said before it was like the morgue the grandmother and the questioning of yourself and all that comes together in like one short film 15 minutes mm -hmm. but in my feature i think there are like yeah there may be, there there's a lot more than three so that's where it's like okay i have to kind of make it all work together i can maybe show you my board because it's right I, I would love that i would love that that's right me. now i'm in the structuring phase so it's like all my scene wow. ideas are like color coded and i'm like organizing them and putting them into like these little post-its are things that i need to add in of like oh i had this idea of like i think this is a li a dialogue yeah, this is some dialogue that I need to add in. So it's stuff like that. And it's very like in the feature film, especially everything is very interdependent. So, mm -hmm. like, oh, if I change this scene here and like at the end of the second act, well, then I have to go back and like some things don't make sense anymore. Yeah. And like scene number two, you know, so so it's all this like making sure that's what takes time for me. But I think maybe also maybe once I've, I write more, I'll be. It'll be quicker. It'll be a know. faster process, you think, huh? Well, the more yeah. you do it, the more, you know, the easier it becomes. Wow. Hopefully. Or maybe not. You know, I still have, I, I still, I just have so much fun writing and it's very, it's very cathartic in a way for me. It's like, I really go through the emotions that like the characters are going through and like, so it's, it's, I, I don't know. I, I really love it. I really love it. So I, I wouldn't know. give it up either. That's great. Let me ask you a question. You spoke about music a little bit. So let's say you were to collaborate with a musician or, or a composer uh, to create a, a film, you know, who would it be? Which artist do you, you think you would connect <laughs> with? I, I don't know a huge, a huge number of composers, but I think like the one that struck me the most in the last couple of years was she's an Icelandic composer. I think her name is uh, Hildur Gudnadotir. <laughs> I don't know if I said that right, but she's, she's like a, she's like a big name composer now. I think she, mm -hmm. I saw her work actually in Arrival by um, Denis Villeneuve. Okay. 
and I just I was so drawn in by by her music because it was so it's just present but it's not overpowering you know and I find sometimes in in musical scores and like sometimes it, the music takes up to too much space and I don't I don't yeah I, I don't tend to appreciate that so much because to me it's like the the story or the character should be the most important thing mm-hmm. and everything around it should support that so when it's yeah okay. I, I was just thinking of the like <laughs> Sergio Leone you know the wah wah <laughs> you know that's the the cowboy movie like the yeah. Um, yeah. Whatever I don't know, that song. It's like okay, but it's like the song is more famous than the movie almost. Like yeah. most most people, most people can't even tell you what the story of that movie is, but they'll know the song, you know. So, but but it's it, it could work. It's iconic. Right it's iconic, but it's like but I wouldn't want to make a movie with him because then yeah. people wouldn't remember the movie. They wouldn't remember the song. You know, <laughs> they wouldn't even remember the story. That's 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 true. That's a good point. But listen, uh, listen, Marilyn, on a more Obviously, on another note, you know, obviously, you know, I love to talk about diversity and inclusion. Mm -hmm. The film industry has been going through, you know, important conversations and uh, about diversity and inclusion. How do you envision your role driving meaningful uh, change and providing opportunities for underrepresented voices, both in front and behind the camera? Yeah, well, I think it starts with like being present and being visible as most I can I suppose and just in my own work and like you know and uh, trying you know trying like the best that I can to hire diverse people and crews as well so you know the times that I do have that power which is not always the case um and also like uh I've started doing more and more mentoring, which is I also find is very very fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm actually a, a mentor for um, Black on Black Films, which is a Montreal-based collective uh, of uh, Afro descendant filmmakers. Okay. And yeah, I've been doing this two years in a row now, where I'm mentoring young um, young Black screenwriters who are like writing their first script, and it's really like it's a six month mentorship where we, I really follow like we're four mentors and really follow along with them and like give them advice. And I find that's very, very rewarding. And now like the, the young screenwriter that I, that I co that I mentored last year, he just directed his first film. So it's like, Oh, it's so cool to see, like to see people coming up. And, you know, I find, I actually find it inspiring to see the younger generation and how they're like, you know, just unapolog- unapologetically Unapologi- doing things. And like, yeah, to me, it's very, very inspiring. And, and I think it's like to be part of like that film community, I find is very, is very, very, um, is very important as well. And I, I'm also starting to like become a jury in certain, for like for certain festivals or certain things like that. And yeah, I find like be often... <laughs> So often it's like the, it's it's I don't want to say sad truth, but it's like oh I'm the only like a di- diverse person in this room, so it's like okay I kind of have that, but I t- like I I really take it seriously that it's like okay so you know I'm not gonna favor a film just because it's a diverse person, but to me it's like if the film is good I'm going to I I want I want I want people to have access to those films that we don't get to see that often you know so. So yeah, because I think there's I have to say for Spesne Mula. But yeah, I think it's like we have to you have to give people opportunities to be able to 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 see films by diverse filmmakers. And yeah, so that's that's something that I that I try to do the best I can. Um, sometimes that's all people need. That's all we're asking for, just an opportunity, access, you know, to yeah. you know get get the opportunity to 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 showcase your talent right exactly but i've noticed in in your work you do a lot of um you showcase a lot of black women in multi-dimensional and complex roles can you elaborate on the creative process um i think it's just natural that i want to tell stories about black women <laughs> i don't know to me it's just it, it, it just came really naturally for the, the the last two films that i made and 
yeah, I find it's like there is something where I find that you know, especially dark skinned black women are mm. very underrepresented in in film, um, in television, say especially in Quebec, but I mean ever I think everywhere it's like you tend to see more light skinned women often when it's black women or even like mixed race women who are supposed to be like you know full black i don't know and you know what i mean like it's like oh but you know we can tell that she's mixed but like but they're but like you see her parents and her parents are black so it's like what that's you know what i mean it's like it just feels a bit strange sometimes to me it's really like a it's really something that i i i I wanted to do and that just I just, it just I just wanted to do it and it just came naturally and there was no questions and you know I find there's so many talented black actresses too that have you know that have talent we can showcase their talent so I mean to me it's like it's it's just something that that I wanted to do that's it. well I, I think I can speak for all <laughs> you know we're happy you're doing it and uh gives opportunities to, to people who wouldn't necessarily uh, get them, you know. Yeah. And I think also, you know, I think just to add to that, I think also is is the aesthetically, I just find like dark skinned women to be just so like the camera just loves them. I find mm. just the way that the light reflects on their face often, it's just so beautiful. So to me, there's also something of like, I just admire that. And I find it's just so beautiful to put in front of a camera. You know, it's just like artistically, I just, I just love it, you know? So yeah, I don't understand why everybody doesn't put <laughs> black women in their films. Cause it's like, have you seen how beautiful they are? It's like, it's amazing. Speaking of black women, is there one, uh, a black person in the industry, uh, actress or uh, someone who's behind the camera that you admire? You, you look up to oh for sure well for me like my 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 mentor <laughs> or the person that i really love is miriam shao yeah. uh, she's really really inspiring for me because you know i think we're we're starting to hear more of her work now but i mean she's been working for a long time she's been around for a long time and you know to see that she continued and that she 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 persevered you know and while she 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 never got in the first couple of years she never got any money to make her films like she really did it just for the passion for the love of it mm -hmm. and to me there's something very very inspiring there and now she's like you know she's going all over the world with her films and like winning prizes and everything and it's like it's to me it's like a recognition that was long past due and I just love her as a person too. I mean, she's just such a lovely person and she yeah. has just such a, such a rich visual language and narrative intelligence. Like to me, it's very, um, it's, she's, she's just amazing. Amazing. I had the chance to meet her as well. Yes. Uh, the film festival, Fantasia film festival last month. Very, very great person as well. Very talented. I encourage you all to support <laughs> the wonderful people with making great films. Uh, for all of us to enjoy what can we expect from you from the next the next few months uh well there's a pot save season two that's coming out next month so i encourage people to check that out on point tv um no ghost in the morgue we're supposed to have a online presence on cbc gem in the next few months so hopefully that'll that'll come through soon um and i'm right now i'm working on a, a documentary series about the beginnings of hip-hop in montreal wow. so in quebec so that's uh that's going to be in february on tele quebec that's amazing and then there's my feature film but that's like i'm yeah, that's that's gonna be a couple of years. So. Let me get back to you on that. <laughs> no, I'm in the creative process, Ray. Just you know, I'm writing. Leave me alone. <laughs> that's great. Listen, Marilyn, I really appreciate time. I appreciate your time. I think it's great that we're able to connect and talk about your projects, and you know how you started and where you're going. It's really, uh, really appreciated, and uh, we'll wish you continued success, and uh, we'll definitely keep in touch. Oh, thank you. Well, thank you so much for reaching out and taking this time to chat. This is a very, yeah. very lovely chat. 
Thank you. Appreciate you. Thank you.